Is crappy sleep ruining your progress? Watch this. Our next caller is Tay Wu from California. What's up, Tay Wu? How can we help you? Hey, Sal and Adam and Justin and Doug. Uh, good to talk to you and uh, uh, Adam again. I don't know if you guys remember me at the NCI event. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll see you guys again in April for the coaching concert. Nice, uh, nice to finally talk to you guys again. Oh, good so. deal. Awesome, yeah, I'll see huh? you then. All right. So my question, yeah, yeah, I'll see you guys there. Um, so my question is about sleep. So for some of the episodes that I've um, listened to about sleep and recovery, I know the importance of that being a trainer and um, um, relaying that message to my clients. And but this question is more personal about me. And so, yeah, kind of give you a little background. Um, for me, uh, my little sleep routine, I do the whole thing as far as no screens or anything stimulating an hour before bed. I read before bed, um, get in bed and turn on like uh, orange lights and all that stuff. So I go to bed around 10, 30, 11 and wake up around 5.45. Um, but what I've kind of noticed is for the past, I'd say five to eight year, years, um, I've kind of like woken up during the night so i wanted to say it was like restful sleep so what happens is i sometimes go to the bathroom so that wakes me up a little bit but then i can kind of go back to sleep um and then sometimes i'll just kind of like wake up naturally and kind of rub my eyes and just toss around in bed but the weird thing is when i do wake up so when my alarm goes off at 5 45 i am up um i don't drink coffee i don't drink tea or I don't need caffeine to wake up. I'm up and throughout the day, um, I don't really get energy crashes or anything like that. Um, which is kind of weird just because it, it like, I don't think I'm getting restful sleep, uh, because I do toss and wake up during the night. And for days, there are some, some days where I've gotten like three hours of sleep and then I wake up at like naturally like seven 30 and I'm kind of fine during the day. So my ultimate question is, I'm still in my 20s and I'm 28 um, and I've heard like, I've talked to some of the trainers and my friends and they're like, uh, oh, once you turn 30, everything's going to go to shit. And so I guess that's my question. Um, is this going to change when I'm 30 or is this my sleep routine, all that stuff, how physiologically how I'm recovering, is that going to change when I'm 30? I uh, just wanted to um, see you guys' input on that. Yeah, your, your friends are wrong. It's 35. It's not 30. Right, right about <laughs> 35. I knew it. No, all joking aside, um, okay, so there's a difference between mm -hmm. being rested, awake and alert, and being wired, right? So sometimes, uh, especially when you're young, you get away with lack of sleep, and uh, it, what it does is it, it just makes you feel more wired. And so you feel like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm doing well. And it's hard to discern between the two. You said for the past five to eight years. So sounds like before you had no issue sleeping. Did anything change in that five to eight year period? Uh, I know you said you don't use any stimulants because that would have been the obvious question I would have asked. So has anything changed in that period of time that could be affecting your sleep? Um, not really. I'd say... Uh, what time I'm do you work out at? Uh, like right now, um, around nine 30, um, in the morning. Um, do you so, drink a lot before you go to bed? Uh, no, or no not, not really. I'd say I probably limit my water consumption probably around what time, like around maybe like eight or nine. And sometimes, um, I'll maybe sip on a, on my water bottle, just the tiny sips, just because I'm like a little parched. Um, but other than that, not really, no. Do you, do you feel more stressed or anxious in general? No, uh, that's the thing. So like, again, like when I wake up at 545, I'm, I'm like a positive person in general. So when I wake up, I'm up, I don't hit snooze. Um, I don't, again, don't have any energy crashes. Um, as far as going back to the first question of like anything changing, not really. I think the only thing that changed was like my wake up time because back in like high school, middle school or whatever, I could sleep in until like 9 30 or 10. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, once I uh, had more clients in the morning of uh, being a personal trainer and coach, and then I have meetings in the mornings at six. So that's when I started waking up at 5 45. Um, 
So when you wake up like sporadically, you know, in the middle of the night, you said you go to the bathroom sometimes, like, do you notice a temperature change? Like, are you hotter? Like, is there like fluctuations in that? Very minimal, I'd say. Um, There, mm, let's see. Do you get strange feelings at all when Sal posts pictures with no shirt on? That's yeah. the direction I was going to go next. Adam Adam feels like he's alone in that, but I told him it's all normal. the time, yeah. all the time. Okay, <laughs> so yeah, so Tay, I'm going to I'm going to rephrase your question. Please tell me if yeah, I'm done. If I, if I yeah, I'm going to rephrase your question. Tell me if I'm if I'm on or off. Okay, so you're asking is, hey guys, I get uh, less sleep than people say I'm supposed to get, but right. I feel great. I have a lot of energy. I don't need caffeine. Right. So everything feels good, but I'm I'm worried that something may be off. I just don't feel like it is. Is that accurate? Right. So like um, I said in the question, like when people turn 30, people all, oh, once you turn 30, everything kind of changes. Yeah, no, that's so, a bunch of bullshit. Well, I guess if it ain't uh, right, broke, right, right. you know, there's nothing yeah. to fix. Well, um, you can deal with it when it happens. Um, sure. I mean, okay. So my guess, I'm going to guess here is because there are, there is a polymorphism, uh, you know, a genetic difference. It's rare, but in, there are people who require less sleep than others. So there's a small chance you could be one of those people. What I would guess it is, is that there is kind of unrealized anxiety and stress, maybe around work, maybe that you wake up, you got to train your clients. You don't want to be late. You want to do a good job. So it's kind of running through your mind and that's kind of affecting uh, your sleep. That's what I'm, that's what I would guess. But there's not much to work with here if you're telling us that you feel great, you've got lots of energy, you don't need lots of stimulants, and you're just wondering if it's you yeah, know, would, causing any problems. I wouldn't worry about it too much. You're no. not. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to shave ten years off your life because you went through a period of uh, sleeping, you know, less hours than what people say is optimal. Um, so long as you're feeling good, I think the the big thing I would just keep an eye on as you turn thirty or thirty five, mm-hmm. as you get older. I, I mean, I if you were to have talked to me at twenty eight about sleep, I would have just scoffed about it. I didn't think I was missing anything, and and even knowing what I know now, I still don't know if you could have convinced me to put more focus on it because I was I didn't think I was feeling anything from it. So maybe. You know, you're fine. Maybe, like Sal said, you're you're an anomaly as far as somebody how many hours you need, and maybe you won't recognize that till you get older. And when you do, you adjust, and you know you have the tools. You've been listening to Mind yeah. Pump for a long time. You know what you should be doing. This reminds me of uh, when Doug was messing with that sleep monitor, uh, and it was like oh, a yeah. wearable. And you know, it's it's he really got into it, right, Doug? In, in terms of like like the analytics, and like was starting to get a little bit obsessed about it, and then actually like interrupted your actual sleep, right? That, that's correct. Yeah. I became very competitive about sleeping. So I got so worried about sleeping, I started to have poor sleep. And here's <laughs> yeah. the thing about turning 30, okay, coming from somebody that uh, is, is way few, older, few years older than that. <laughs> <Yeah>. is, <laughs> that's bullshit. Okay. I'm just going to say that right <laughs> now. At 30, 40, is young 50, and vi- it's really, virile. if yeah. you think you're going to have a problem, you're going to have a problem. If you don't think you have a problem, you take care of yourself, you won't have a problem. I'll tell you that right now. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, if you really want to go deeper, if you think there's an issue, Tewu, I would work with a sleep expert and monitor. They'll actually monitor your sleep to see what's going on. But there's not much to work with uh, on our end about you know what you're talking about. Yeah, I'm most concerned about the weird feelings you're getting when Sal do those posts. That's, I, uh, it's that's totally the only normal. thing that that's the only thing that stands out. It's to totally me. normal, Adam. Yeah. There's no hey, issues totally there. Normal, like Sal says. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I guess going back to the um, the anxiety thing, I think. Now that I'm thinking back on it, when I had to, you know, teach boot camp classes or like clients in the morning, I think there was that that anxiety of like, oh, what if I miss my alarm and what if it doesn't go off? And I think that's potentially why. Um, So, yeah, that's what I would guess. Were you that used to happen to me? How were you in school? Were you like a man? I got to do this. I got to be perfect straight A's. I got to work my ass off. Or are you like that with Um, other things? More or less, um, I think, well, in college, um, I, I used to be in the marching band. So uh, we would practice, we, we would have to be at the stadium at 7 a.m. So I would wake up at like uh, like 5.30 or 6, just get ready and all that. So I guess that's when I had to kind of force myself to be like a morning person. Mm. Um, but yeah, middle school, high school, I could sleep until like, well, like Adam 9.30 did that or 10 flute. easily. Was great. Yeah. <laughs> big flute. Big yeah, flute. A big flute you, uh, um, uh, do you meditate? Um, no. Yeah. Um, okay. Right before I go to, what was that? I, I, I start, start, start a meditation practice. Um, okay. You have some, it sounds like you have some unrealized 
anxiety that mm. you're not fully completely aware of and that's what's causing you to wake up early and maybe mm. toss and turn because you're maybe anxious about being a good trainer or building and maybe your business. focus on something else mm. like creating a problem by you know focusing on something that's not really a problem yeah. uh you know it, you know creates its own issue so yeah it's, me- it's, meditation would help i, I yeah. think but meditation is a practice so it's like exercise that means you're going to suck at it for a while so you got to keep sticking to it so just keep that in mind if you end up taking the advice with meditation but I, it feels like there's some unrealized or un, you're some anxiety that you're just not fully aware of. And so it feels like things are weird. What's going on? But the more I talk to you, the more it sounds like you have some anxiety about being good or being a good trainer or waking up on time or, you know, showing up on time or building your business. That'll definitely keep somebody, you know, it's an, it's like a, it's like a movie running in the background of your brain. Right. So, and it's just there and meditation can help you turn things off or, or for actually uh, to say it better, Meditation can help you not focus on the movie in the background. So it's just there, but that's okay. You're not identifying with it. So that would be the only piece of advice I could give you based on what you gave us. So I I hope that helps. Yeah, I think so. I think now that I'm like actually like talking to someone about it, um, because I I think this is the first time I've like actually like dug deep a little bit into this. Um, Yeah, I think the hidden anxiety part is definitely um i'm obviously dropping my ego of like oh i'm always positive i'm always yeah. energetic but um dropping the ego of like maybe i do have some you know for uh, unforeseen anxiety um that i've been kind of like pushing down i guess so uh but yeah this yeah this opened my eyes to a lot of things hey no that's great that was actually really really cool change of direction there at the very end with what you just said yeah. that's that's a great first step so we'll see you at the next event Tewu. thank you for calling. yes sir thank you guys I- see you in april no problem yeah, you know, boy, how, does this remind you when you get a client and they would talk to you about stuff and you're like, ah, oh, this is really weird. But then you keep asking questions, keep talking, and then they, it's like, it starts to kind of come out. I, 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 I do feel I get like DM, that's the issue. I get DMs a lot like this. And it's, uh, and it's, it's normally from fans or people that have been listening a, a lot to the show because we cover a lot of stuff. Mm-hmm. And sometimes I feel like people, um, you know, it almost like what Justin was saying, where they're almost like they're looking for a problem where there's yeah. not a problem. They you know? found a diagnosis for something right. that they were looking for. A, they're like looking for a problem. Right. It's like if he doesn't need to use caffeine, he pops right up and he wakes up. I mean, sure, we could sit here and, and act like a bunch of therapists and try to get to the bottom of like this <laughs> deep rooted anxiety. Well, we're, we're, <laughs> he's actually he's actually stressing over something he thinks you should stress about. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, yeah. it's like you're actually what you're talking about right now, just the fact that you're talking about it is probably doing more harm than what is actually happening at nighttime. So just let it go. You know, I I don't think, I mean, he's got nothing that's, that's pointing towards uh, this sleep is really, really affecting him. It's the thought about him losing the sleep, which is something he got probably from us listening to us talk about. Yeah. And this is the, the sort of dark side of like the biohacking community. I think you get in so much to the nuances of things that are like, you know, like it, you get so obsessed on on every little detail of things, and it, it interrupts you know the whole. Like it, it yeah, tells bring progress. It, and and to just to play devil's advocate, it, it very well could be a situation where the only thing he's aware of is that his sleep is off. But what he's not aware of is why, or that he's anxious, or you know, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I've definitely had lack of sleep. But I'm able to function because I'm wired, mm-hmm. and because I'm older, I know the difference between wired and you know, rested and awake, right? Right. He might not even be aware of that difference and just be like, no, I'm doing fine. I pop up and I'm working and, you know, kind of, you know, burning his, his body out a little bit and he can get away with it. So it may be that, you know, it may be one of those things, but I think the overthinking aspect of it, I think it kind of became a little evident as we talked yeah. to him a little more, yeah. right? Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here and be sure to subscribe.